Um, so next we are going to have, we're talking about... Cosmo Academy. Yes. Yeah, so do you want to give an overview of Cosmo Academy while I work on getting these things set up? Sure, sure. And uh, Tim, if you can get uh, Ray and, and Matthew set up and ready to come in, um, they will be talking <clears throat> in the next segment. So Cosmo Academy is a part of CosmoQuest where you can come and take a class using the Google Hangouts technology and um, learn some either uh, learn some bit of astronomy. So we've had four different classes so far. We've had oh the solar system and we've had the sun and stars and we've had galaxies and then we've had cosmology. Um, so all covering all of the intro astronomy type topics over four different classes. Um, so these are done with Google Hangouts. So you have a private hangout with an instructor. You meet. Um, where we may be changing up the way that things have been scheduled, but we've had it, uh, I think, twice a week for four weeks in the past. But uh, as we'll talk about in a bit, we are uh, looking to see what you guys want to uh, to see. Um, brain stopped moving. <laughs> to see how we're going to run these classes in the future. Um, so this gives you an opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with the, uh, an instructor, or one-on-eight <laughs> maximum to work with an instructor um, and uh, it's uh, it's it's a it's for quite a good price so we priced it such that um, you know it's like getting uh, you know I think you compared it to your horse lesson yeah so so when we set the price for it um, we we want to give everything away for free but we can't always. We have to pay our instructors. Yeah, so we pay our instructors. Um, and I, I ride horses. It's it's my evil vice. Um, I say evil vice because occasionally I get fairly hurt riding the horses. Fair enough. <laughs> um, but I pay for lessons so that I get better, so that I can constantly learn. And I respect the professionalism of my instructor and it's because I respect him and I know that I have something to gain from working with him that I pay. Um, I could always find some random friend to give me pointers for free, but to know that I'm going to get a quality experience that I'm actually going to learn and I'm going to be safe, I pay a professional to train me. Well, mm -hmm. we have professional instructors. Uh, the person who runs this program is Dr. Matthew Francis. Um, he is a PhD astronomer. He, he's writing a cosmology book right now. And everyone else that we have teaching, they, they've taken the classes, they, they're there because they know how to communicate and they know the content. And we set the price so that it's the equivalent of any other hobby class, whether it be a dance class, a music class, a horseback riding class. And, um, Early dance class. <laughs> yeah, and we keep the classes small, we keep the classes interactive, there are projects and homework. Um, I'm actually going to be teaching a class in August that I'm going to work on posting up on the boards while Matthew and Ray are talking so that you can go sign up for that if you want. I am not going to pay myself all of the funding from teaching this class, which will be on how we know the Big Bang is true and how the universe will end. Um, all of that is going to get donated back into CosmoQuest. And I am looking to teach an astrobiology course, uh, so if we find that there's enough interest in learning about uh, how we look for life outside of Earth, um, I've taught that class at University of Virginia, and I'd love to turn that into one of our online classes. So I'm, I'm, I'm shamelessly plugging that to get people interested <laughs> so I can teach this class. <laughs> so. Uh, that's one I uh, hope to teach in the future. I taught that as a 300 level college course, uh, and it was, it was uh, summer semester, so you know how those are. Yeah, um, <laughs> two so, hours a day every day. But it's uh, it's a, it's a fun topic, uh, and and Guido is keeping track of the uh, link for us. We've just broke the five thousand dollar barrier. So oh wow! Yay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, so keep sharing that. Um, We're now at two and a half percent. <laughs> yes, keep sharing that uh, so we can keep that going. Um, and like I said to Tim, I don't know if he's listening, <laughs> you can send Matthew and Ray to the Hangout uh, so we can get started. Um, there's a bit of a discussion going on, this is a little off topic, um, about why there aren't as many um, minorities in science and skepticism. Uh, so oh, there's a very good uh, discussion yeah. going on there and that is uh, I mean, as something as, as women in science we work on, yeah. um, but uh, that is an active area of discussion within the professional societies that of which we're a part on how best to encourage um, more minorities to participate because, um, yeah, there, it's, it's, it's very skewed towards... Well, and <laughs> one of the really disturbing pieces of research that I read talked about... Um, 
if you have someone who's grown up um, disadvantaged, and statistically you're more likely to have grown up disadvantaged if you're a minority. If you've grown up disadvantaged and you break through to get into a good college program, to get yourself into a good profession, you are less likely, given all the opportunities in the world, to choose a profession that is typically not the best paying. So given the choice of going into business, going the choice of uh, given the choice of going into engineering, um, minorities will often self-select the higher paying careers um, that also are more likely to give them jobs. There's a YouTube video going around that talks about how I believe it's less than 10% of the people who get advanced degrees in um, the sciences, uh, specifically physics, astronomy, actually work in those fields. So um, those of us who go into this, we've willingly said, I'm going to live a life by choice where I know I in all likelihood will end up have to, having to switch careers, where I in all likelihood will uh, always be trying to figure out how to pinch pennies. We make these choices and we do this on purpose. It's not just the profession though, there's also yeah. uh, the minorities with an interest in science and yeah. skepticism, so why aren't we seeing as much of that as well. I think that's And a there's a lot of cultural bias there yeah. that that I don't know that body of research as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Keep having that discussion. It is a very good discussion uh, to be having. And so. we have Matthew and Ray here and I'm going to disappear into my computer while they talk. Okay. So welcome guys. You are hangout pros. So <laughs> you made Tim's job in the green room a bit easier. So yay. Uh, could you introduce yourselves and give us a little bit of background and uh, yeah, and we'll go from there. First of all, I feel like I'm left out here. We've got two cyborgs facing us here. Uh, <laughs> we've got uh, two Google Glass wearers and you know, my, my glasses are very, very primitive. Join us. <laughs> I don't think the Borg the do Borg, this. The Borg. The <laughs> Borg. <laughs> so I'm, I'm Matthew Francis. I'm a professional science writer and director of Cosmo Academy. Um, I have a uh, PhD from uh, Rutgers University. I've been a college professor in my past life, director of a planetarium, and currently I am writing a book uh, called Backroads Dark Skies. I am busier than almost anybody except probably the the your hosts, Pamela and Nicole. So, uh, um, but I'll, t I'll talk a little more about Cosmo Academy once Ray's introduced himself. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Ray Sanders. I uh, blog around on the internet. Um, uh, know me as my website, uh, Dear Astronomer. I've been part of the Cosmo Quest education and, and public outreach team for quite a while now, um, working under Pamela and now under Matthew as part of Cosmo Academy, uh, one of the instructors for a few courses now. So um, that's about all I got for right now. So, Matthew? Okay, well Cosmo Academy is uh, sort of the spin-off of Cosmo Quest where we, we have a, it's, it's kind of an umbrella where we, we put a lot of different things, but the main thing we've been focused on recently has been a series of online classes, um, which actually Ray has, has taught the majority of those so far. We've, had, we've offered four classes total, and Ray's taught three of them. But uh, uh, and I'll let Ray talk a little bit about the classes he's done. Uh, my, my class that I offered was in cosmology, which is my background. It was just an introduction to the subject of the universe, the entire universe. Um, and although that sounds like a huge topic, it isn't quite as big as it might seem um, because we focus on particular aspects of it. We focus on, um, you know, what is the origin of certain things rather than trying to talk about every single thing we talk about. Okay, instead of talking about an individual galaxy, we talk about where did the first galaxies arise? Why did they arise when they did and how, why did they look the way they do? Um, stuff like when did the chemical elements that make up our bodies come from, come in? You know, all of that has to do with the entire detailed history of the universe. Um, and in the class, we spend a lot of time talking about 
the uh, cosmic microwave background. I have to have the beach ball here. This is the sky in microwave light. Uh, the colors you see in this are temperature fluctuations um, that uh, described how the universe was about 380,000 years after the Big Bang. And so this is the kind of thing that the class was able to talk about. We were able to not just look at this beach ball, although we looked at that too, but we were also able to talk about uh, uh, what the colors actually mean, including things like how does the... Uh, how do we know how much dark matter there is in the universe? How much? How do we know how much dark energy there is in the universe? And that kind of thing can be found from looking at those temperature fluctuations. And so this is the kind of thing we're able to do in a class like this. If you read a, a book on popular science, they may or may not go into that kind of detail. But we can do it in, in this kind of online class. We can specialize and say, all right, this is the really cool stuff. This is the stuff you see in the news we can provide it for you in much greater detail than you've been able to see before. So I'll talk a little bit more about what we what we are are thinking of doing in the future, but I'll let Ray talk a bit about the classes he's he's offered. Sure, thanks a lot, Matt. Um, one of the things that um, we've done before in the previous classes, um, the the first one that we launched was Intro to Solar System Science. Uh, modeled somewhat like your typical Astronomy 101 course, where we start off and we talk about the solar system. We talk about the inner planets. We talk about, you know, the outer planets, the asteroid belt, and get kind of like a bulk overview. Um, the guiding principle that I had when I was writing the course content for these is I wanted something more than what you'd see on, like, a Discovery Channel or a Science Channel, but I, I didn't want to bury people down with as much um, as you would see in a typical university class. So somewhere in between there. People who want to learn more but aren't ready to or, you know, for whatever reasons they have, not quite <coughs> go and sign up at their college for Astronomy 101. And I took that same guiding principle for the second class that I offered, which was an introduction to galaxies and cosmology, paving the way uh, for Matthew's class, where, you know, again, you know, we, we talked about uh, the bulk properties of galaxies, what makes them special, um, you know, interesting things such as, you know, the, the discovery that the rotation rates don't match up with the measured mass. So, you know, paving the way for understanding where dark matter comes from and how it plays a role in galaxies and galaxy clusters. Um, and, and again, all of these concepts, every class that I've offered, I've always tried to, um, in the background, introduce a concept that helps pave the way and generate interest for another class. In my solar system, uh, Intro to the Solar System, uh, we focused a fair amount on um, other worlds, um, habitable worlds, if you will, and exploring, you know, Titan and, and looking at the possibility of life on Mars and um, Enceladus and Europa. And then, you know, looking at that as, okay, we can look in our own backyard for, you know, what, what exactly makes a, a planet habitable and pave the way for, you know, based on potential interest, a, um, an exoplanets and astrobiology course. You know, if people are interested in learning, you know, what, what types of things uh, may help us understand uh, where we can find signs of life elsewhere. And um, then... You know, as I was saying in the uh, galaxies and uh, galaxy clusters course, um, I did a, a brief introduction to cosmology. Um, I'll admit my professional background in astronomy is that of um, variable stars and observational astronomy. So I was more than happy when I heard that Matthew was doing a cosmology class. I, <laughs> I, I, was, I did not argue with Pamela one bit on that one. I was like, well, if we can't get Lawrence Krauss, you know, you know, let's get a cosmologist, and, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that. So uh, the third class that um, I'm about three-quarters of the way through is uh, the sun and stellar structure. Um, that was something that only got covered uh, the very basics of in my Intro to the Solar System class. And uh, what we're doing in this most recent class is uh, learning about the inner structure of the sun and stars in general, 
um, some of the physics that go behind forming stars from uh, giant molecular clouds of hydrogen, and um, exploring the, the lives and deaths of stars, you know, going from these cold, dense clouds of hydrogen all the way out into white dwarfs, neutron stars, and of course, you know, black holes and supernova. We can't, you know, cover the, the birth and death of stars without getting into the really cool stuff. And what's cool is a lot of these classes, you know, just like a lot of science classes elsewhere, uh, there's, there's a little bit of overlap. Um, in each of these classes that help kind of reinforce some of these key concepts. Uh, I noticed when Matthew was talking about his cosmology class, he talks about, you know, where, where the elements from our bodies come from and how maybe your right hand has molecules in it that came from one star and your left hand maybe has molecules from a different star. So, you know, these, these key concepts are really cool. Matthew, we're, we're getting asked how you can get one of those lovely beach balls. Uh, that's a really good question because you could never buy them. Um, really? These were these were uh, these were handed out to researchers on the WMAP project, the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Project, um, which was the the big. Uh, cosmic microwave background satellite operating a few years ago. In fact, it just ended its mission last fall. Um, but it collected you know, 10 years of, of really excellent, close to 10 years of really excellent data. And, uh, uh, but I got, I, I was collaborated with a WMAP scientist for, on a, on a research paper and she had a whole filing cabinet drawer full of these things mm -hmm. and so I gave them away to a bunch of friends and now I've only got one left so, okay. so they can't be bought you cannot you're buy them and I, I think they missed an opportunity they yeah, need to seriously. manufacture and sell them because people would love them I've seen little the little plushies of the CMB and I can't remember if someone can come up with that website um, that's Cosmo Zoo or something like that. Maybe somebody can Google yeah, that in the back. Maybe the same people that do the particles as well. They yeah, I think it's yeah, I think it's Particle Zoo. Yeah, is, okay. Is the site. <laughs> yeah, because you can get because uh, you can get uh, you know plushy of the Higgs boson or yeah, you know, quarks and neutrinos. Yeah. So, but the, yeah, but now that you mention it, yeah, I think that's the same site that does okay. the plushy CMB. I want a plushy um, epic of reionization, so that's why I, I remember that. <laughs> do they have that? Awesome. What? They made a plushy EOR. I mean, granted, we haven't Whoa. seen what it looks like yet, but they awesome. made one. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, we, we, we have to, we have to, well, I, you know, come on. What do we know? What, what color is the Higgs boson? There you go. <laughs> that sounds like um, something so you'd ask in a dorm room late at night. So we uh, have some uh, comments. People are all over the world interested in these courses, and of course, the time zones don't always work out. Uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about the poll that you're running um, to find out more interest about these classes. Yes. Um, have you have you been able to feed the link in? No, I haven't. Okay. Uh, um, can yeah, you chat so that at me? Yeah, I did. It's it's on the it's in the chat. Okay. Um, we are we are currently uh, gearing up to offer some new classes, but here's the deal. So far, the classes we've offered have been um, well, they, they've been shorter versions of. I would guess you you you'd think of them as as casual style university classes, like Ray was saying. They're they're not as they're not as intensive. They're not as long. But there's still a pretty major time investment, and so we've been thinking, okay, is this necessarily the best kind of class? Is this the only kind of class? We don't have any rules we have to follow. We have no, you know, we have no semester. We have no university Break board. Yes, no rules. Uh, we we. Anarchy. No, no. Um, we we are we we are able to do what we want, which includes tailoring classes to people's interests. And so uh, we've been thinking a lot about what we would like to do if we, if we can do anything we want. Um, and in fact, uh, I'll have Pamela up in a minute and talk about uh, a, a class that she would like to offer in August. Um, but uh, we're we're thinking about shorter classes, you know, classes that may be two sessions, four sessions instead of eight sessions, or maybe uh, workshops where we talk specifically about okay. 
uh, maybe you bought a new telescope and you'd like to know how to use it. Maybe uh, you'd like to know something about uh, the science of looking for exoplanets. Um, you know, go one step farther from, you know, using the citizen science projects that, that we've got going on. What if you want to know more about the details? But you don't need an eight-hour session for that, you, an eight-hour class, not a single eight-hour session. That'd be insane, even, even by my standards. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, maybe not. Maybe not by uh, maybe not by the twenty-four hour party people standards that we've got going here, but uh, but uh, uh, you know, we, maybe two hours would be enough. Well, we can do that. Again, we've got no rules. So, in the interests of that, we'd like your input. Uh, so we have we have created a poll. And we'd love it if you would give us some feedback. What I put might the link you be in the events. Um, it's kind of long, but it's just go to cosmoquest.org slash blog and look for the post entitled, What Would You Like to See from Cosmo Academy? So maybe we can do a quickie. Maybe we can do a... Maybe I, I'll see. I'll see in a minute if I can do that in my lower third or something like that. Okay. My in my name badge, so you can see it. Sure. But uh, the main thing is, we'd love it. We'd love to hear from you. And and we've been talking about classes on astrobiology. We've been talking about maybe a class specifically about Titan, um, Saturn's moon, which is you know we've we've learned so much about Titan thanks to the Cassini and Huygens mission, um, but. Again, you maybe maybe eight hours would be overkill for for most of most of us, but a short course we could really go a lot more in depth than we'd ever be able to do. And you would not learn this from a magazine, you would not learn this from a book, but you could learn it from us. And so we would love to be able to offer classes that you particularly would be interested in. So the the poll is uh, available on uh, th link through our blog and uh, we would be happy to get some input from you. Um, you want to talk about your class for a minute, Pamela? Or are you busy? I, so I just finished posting this up on Eventbrite. She's a typing ninja. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to code my websites while they're in production, apparently. Um, so, That's me uh, too. <laughs> so we don't have the links over at CosmoQuest.org yet, but I have it live on Eventbrite. Let me read the des the description for you because it's quite clever. I'm quite pleased with it. And I haven't read this yet, so I'm trusting her. <laughs> okay. Um, so the the description is: Astronomers on a CSI style mission have followed the clues to find the culprit behind the formation of the universe. Going by the alias Big Bang, the perpetrator behind the highest energy event ever imagined left behind a series of clues about her identity. In this colloquium, students will study three lines of evidence that prove the Big Bang formed the universe. Based on their profile of the Big Bang, students will explore what the universe's ultimate fate may be. So I am setting this up. This is going to be a four-hour short course where we're going to discuss where we came and how we're going to die. It's always good to answer the big questions. That was um, a really sad episode of Astronomy Cast. <laughs> I remember that one. Oh my god! I'm well, so Phil, Phil's up next, right? He 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 wrote a whole book about that. Yeah. So so um, if you go to CQX zero nine nine dash, we'll we'll just tweet the links in a few minutes, and I'm going to ask these two gentlemen if if you could post it up on um, the CosmoQuest.org slash classes when this is over. That would be awesome. Um, this this is a class. I'm going to teach three sections of it. One running from one to two p.m. Monday, Wednesdays. Times are Pacific here, so from one to two p.m. Pacific is section three. Uh, from four to five p.m. is section one, and from six to seven p.m. is section two. So three sections of the same course. Eight people allowed per section. You got me into yourselves. Four hours of instruction. We're going to charge $120 per class because that's equivalent to what I would pay my horseback riding instructor, um, and or my belly dance instructor, or her belly dance instructor. <laughs> and all of that money is going to get donated back into CosmoQuest to keep, uh, well, paying Matthew and Ray to get them to invest their time in um, 
keeping to develop new classes. So this is one way you can help us pay our bills and learn and get some eight on one time with me. So we're hoping that you will sign up for those. We will tweet out all the links uh, as soon as I'm done talking, I guess. Um, so this is our first foray into the short course. Um, it's not that short, it's still four hours, but uh, I wanted to make sure it was worth your time and these classes are going to start on August 12th. Great. Very good. Um, Looking forward to it and Pamela, you've got the cool sunglasses that you can put on when you start the class since you're going yes. with the whole CSI theme. Them all, yeah! Yes, I do. And they, uh, while I was saying that, they were sitting here flicking madly. Yeah, Phil's tweeting at us. Okay, so, <laughs> so is Jeffrey Notkin. So, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, all the things. This is weird. I know. <laughs> Phil's blade is in my eyeball. It's really weird. Well, wait a minute. So, so, I, don't, so I don't feel left out. I can join in the foray here. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, Ray, who is also a costumer. He's in the 501st. Yes. We love our Stormtrooper Allegiance. <laughs> yes. They do great, great volunteerism and amuse me to no end at the same time. And raise millions of dollars per year for places like Make-A-Wish. So That's not yeah, only do we yeah. get to be fun little nerds at places like Dragon Con and San Diego Comic Con, but we also get to help kids who are desperately in need. So anyways. <laughs> are you so, coming to Dragon Con? I wish. That's usually one of those things you got to plan two years in advance for. Yes. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that later. But you know, for for just to take a, a quick run on that side note, for those of you who are big in the costuming world, um, I know Pamela and Nicole have appeared at Dragon Con for years and years. So. And we'll be there again this year. I have my first year as a guest status. I'm so excited. Well, attending professional, like guest light. <laughs> oh, nice. I'm happy. <laughs> Um, uh, Pamela see. and Matthew, you guys, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, Nicole. No, go um, for it. We, we touched on a few of the ideas for some of the other classes. Do we want to tell everybody about some of the other ones that we're kicking around real quick? Yes, to yes, your feedback on? Yeah, and, go, go for and it. do we have any questions coming in on the feed? Oh, just yeah. uh, we have uh, from Thomas Tranaker saying, I want to workshop on Voyager. So, Vigor, <laughs> a Vigor short course. I think um, that's that would be mission. great. Um, I don't know if we've got anybody who has spoken to us yet. Pardon me, there's a siren going outside. I hope yeah. nobody can hear that. Um, very loud on my end. Um, I'm hoping uh, we we do not have anybody in our our roster of instructors who is an expert on that, but I'm sure we could find someone. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, actually we that's another in thing. Emily Lakdawalla. Yes, actually, Emily was one I was hoping we could pro we could uh, uh, talk to about uh, something about maybe Saturn's moons, um, a class on that because I mean where 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 better to learn about Saturn's moons than from Emily I would say. So, we, we can ambush her later. She has a yes. segment later. We can totally ambush and her. and early on when we first started uh, doing these classes, um, we actually. There, there was some talk going on about having Emily do a planetary geology, like a, a planetary science course. So that's another thing, you know, for people who are um, a little more interested in the, the planetary aspect of, um, you know, planetary science, um, that's definitely a possibility out there too. And that would tie in well if we did um, like a future astrobiology and exoplanets course. And I know Nicole has... Nicole has uh, uh, Oh, well, I put a plug in for that just before you yes, guys came on. Yes, astrobiology. Okay. Yes, Nicole. Nicole is uh, has already said that she would be interested in offering an exobiology course. So, you want to? Sure. Yeah. I say mean, a bit about that. For, of course, my my radio astronomy background uh, gets me all excited about SETI. Um, but then I taught the astrobiology course at UVA. Um, uh, it was a uh, Written the course was designed by uh, Bob Rood, who sadly passed away a little over a year ago. Um, but I took over his summer class, you know, while he so he could actually get research done and stuff during the summer. Um, and uh, I had to brush up on my biology because I haven't had it since high school um, to to get that. But we got to cover all the basics of astronomy uh, in ways that related to life, um, and then talk about biology, evolution, 
the nature of intelligence, um, communication, the history of the SETI project. There's a lot there. Um, probably too much for any one course. For we, you know, individual topics could could be split up as well. Um, but that is such a fun topic, and it's interdisciplinary. So, so we just had Jeff Notkin ask on Twitter, a noisy astronomer, star strider, dear astronomy, can I use sci-fi props for my segment? Yes, you can totally. Um, so please do bring props. We like props. Oh, and it, it's uh, 75 days, 6 hours, 25 minutes, and 58 seconds, a few minutes ago, left until Dragon Con. Thank you, Steve DeGroof. <laughs> we'll see you there. <laughs> so hopefully, uh, when Jeff brings uh, his props and everything, hopefully he'll bring some of those uh, really cool meteorites he had on display a couple weeks ago at Space yeah. Fest. Pigs in space, huh, Matthew? <laughs> nice. Is that a lunchbox? This is a lunchbox. This is an authentic. <laughs> this is an authentic, 1970s vintage pigs in space lunchbox. I used to take this, take my lunch to uh, uh, conferences in this because awesome. I have to. We've completely derailed the conversation with you today. <laughs> so, so we promise if you sign up for a Cosmo Academy course, those will stay on target. Yes, I've sat in they, on these guys' classes, and they've done an amazing job uh, we do. conversing we with do. the students about do. the topic itself and not getting derailed. So. Yes, yeah, say Nicole inspires us to be ADD, but uh, uh, classes we tend to stay on target. and, and uh, I was okay when I filled in for you. Right? Yes, yeah, say you're, stay you're not on ADD. target, stay on target, Star Wars. Almost oh. there. <laughs> See, I, I had to go and do it. I, I apologize right up front for totally derailing everything with the Stormtrooper helmet. That's that's my bad. But you know what? It's all in the sense of fun. I mean, we're here to have fun. We're here to get everybody excited and jazzed up about science. And to be perfectly honest, if that means I've got to throw on my Stormtrooper helmet and do a little dance, hey, if it gets everybody excited about science, I will do that. I will dress up as Bozo the Clown if we reach our funding goal. So what, I will really? throw that out right now. <laughs> okay, you hear that? I will, if you we reach, that? yes, if we reach our funding goal, I will dress up as Bozo. The, well, I can't use that because they'll send a cease and desist letter, but I'll be like Bobo the science clown. So <laughs> if everybody wants to see me on the Hangouts dressed up as a clown, I know professional rodeo clowns. I can get the makeup. I, I will do that. We hit our goal. I will throw that gauntlet down right now. From and, all my and hey, in the Ray, uh, yes, Jeff just said... Um, they say yes. Now I just have to choose which ones, and definitely yes on the meteorites. <laughs> All right, cool. So, I, I, I don't know if there's Although any interest. The science clown has been promised if we reach 200,000. You heard it here live, everybody. Actually, we got to be careful, though. That might be disincentive, because clown, well, clowns scare people. Well, you don't well, have I, to watch that hangout. Well, we'll clown. put up a not safe for clown fears tag on it. There we go. Okay, well, you know, and that was the same theory I had about, you know, trying to play live music. You know, I, I play guitar, and I'm like, you know what, no, I, I want people to help out and participate and watch the Hangout, so I, you know, was not going to offer to do live music, because we want people to watch the show. So, Aww. that could have unintended science, um, or unintended side effects of me doing the, the science clown, but I'll, I'll do it. You know, whatever it takes, guys. Whatever it takes. <laughs> We love you all, and I'm about to post all the links for those classes over on Google+. We have um, a flash drive. I don't know what's on it, but we have a flash drive. We, we, have, we have been flashed. Okay. <laughs> it's for a later segment. It's good. <laughs> so, so if you guys could have anyone you wanted on to teach a Cosmo Academy class, who would you have on? Other than Carl Sagan. He's dead. This would be cool. It would be. <laughs> Hologram. Hologram Sagan. Mm, I'm not sure that worked. I put up the uh, I put up the link on my. Oh, excellent! That's too long. Just too long. <laughs> Maybe we'll, well, let me see if I can do a short link oh, again yeah, when, maybe, when like, I have when I have a moment of distraction. All right, who, all right, who, Ray. What's what? Who would be your your uh, dream Cosmo Academy professor? Other than yourself. Is, well, <laughs> I'm not my dream. There's. Plenty of other people I would love to see doing classes other than myself. I enjoy doing it, don't get me wrong, but there are people I would definitely um, pay to join the class as even as an instructor. Um, 
well, to be perfectly honest, um, he's a little bit busy doing through the wormhole on Science Channel, but you know, <laughs> he's not a qualified instructor as in you know a PhD scientist. But man, it's awesome watching Morgan Freeman talk about the universe. Oh my you god! You know, just just you know, it's it's awesome. But as far as people who do great science, um, I mean, honestly, there's there's a few people that I've had um, in my time at ASU who are just incredible professors. Um, you know, you could get a great class from uh, Dr. Robinson from the, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter team. Um, he'd do great class on the moon and get people jazzed up about it. Um, as far as other instructors, um, if we could get Phil to do one, you know, that'd be fun. That'd be a lot of fun. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, I mean, you know, to get some of the powerhouses out there, you know, that'd, that'd be cool too. But um, you know, that's wishing. <laughs> what, one of my wishes would be, uh, so Jim Condon of the National Radio Astronomy Observatory was my radio astronomy professor when I was a grad student. And uh, I remember his co-professor, Scott Ransom, uh, wanted to like video his lectures for posterity because they were just so good. He was there for a lot of the early VLA work. Um, so uh, if Jim Condon's not too busy, <laughs> you can come teach a radio astronomy course for Hey, him. I'd take that class. I'd yeah. take that class. It was amazing because he sprinkles in the stories, right, that you learn from, you know, of, oh, there are so many good stories from the early days of radio astronomy and, uh, and just being, you know, one of the black belts at it. Um, that was pretty cool. Brian yeah, Mallow is, is another. Uh, we've got Brian Mallow from Undercutter Over Steve who's, who missed his plug We've been plugging your coffee. Oh, you can't read that from here. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Mallow, a uh, science comedian. That would be yes. an amazingly entertaining class. Uh, Brian Cox, Phil Plate again. So, Phil, Phil, you oh, know Bill, we're going to hit you up in the next hour. Definitely <laughs> Brian Cox. That would be that, that would be amazing. There, the universities in uh, the UK, there was a story about this a while back. The universities in the UK have actually had to tighten up their science program entry requirements because of what they're calling the, uh, the um, uh, I forget what the name was, that they're having a side effect um, from everybody enrolling because of him making um, physics Wonders? and everything. I'm sorry? Wonders of the Universe, was that what it was called? Yeah. The show? Yeah, they're, they're just basically, like, they've been flooded, which is awesome, though. A, a flood of people enrolling in the universities in the UK to pursue science degrees, but so many of them that they haven't, they're, they're just overfilled. So, I mean, it is kind of sad that the, the outcome of that was that they had to tighten up their entry requirements, but, you know, hey, packed classrooms, getting people jazzed up and excited about science and trying to pursue careers in it, hey, I call that a win. Yeah, totally. Matthew, do you have a, a, a wishful professor type or someone who you took a class from that was just amazing? Um, I was trying to think of who would be, who would be great to... You know, the, thinking of of an expert who who would really provide you know a unique perspective on their particular topic, because um, there's there are so many that uh, yeah I'm blanking on names at the moment. Oh, we got we have a question. request for Thad Zabo. You know, Ooh. I would love to get Thad to teach a course, and one of the citizen science projects on our list of things to do should we get enough funding is right behind that radio project that we've been talking about. So to do a project with Thad as the lead scientist looking at clusters of galaxies in the Sloan Digital Sky Survey. Yeah, yeah. so he, if you don't know who Thad is, you need to watch the Virtual Star Party because he's one of the token talking heads, <laughs> astronomers. Uh, and I would also like to add, if anyone's taken astronomy class at the University of Virginia in the last several decades, Charlie Tolbert. Charlie Tolbert is an amazing professor. Uh, no, never uses slides, never uses PowerPoint. Ch just, you know, chalkboard, right? And uh, an amazing astronomy professor. Uh, he's retired now. Uh, I know he was still teaching a few classes after retirement <laughs> to help with the shortfall. Um, but because uh, of the hiring freeze, but uh, Charlie Tolbert, we that would be another wishful, wishful thinking to get him in one of our hangouts teaching. So wahoo wah, who else do we so got? Let me let me throw something out real quick to yeah. all of our viewers to reply out there. This is kind of something that I kind of want to throw out. Um, you know, we talk about several different facets of science. Of course, obviously, a lot of our citizen science projects that we do at CosmoQuest are you know planetary science and astronomy related. But, um, you know, we are asking earlier what people would like to see more of in our classes. 
But as far as like science and of course space exploration and planetary science in general, what do you viewers out there want to see more of just in general, just to get people engaged in a conversation? You know, do we, we want more manned space flight? Do we want a lander on Titan? You know, what within the realm of possibilities, a obviously not on Earth, Titan. Right, but pardon? A boat on Titan. Oh, I, I, I really was upset when I saw that that mission didn't yeah. get approved. I really would have loved to have seen a little sailboat on on Titan. But, but seriously, folks, if there's something that is on the horizon, like I said, within the realm of possibility, you know, I don't, I don't want to hear about how you'd love for us to explore Alpha Centauri with warp drive. But, you know, if there's a destination in the solar system and you think that we ought to have a crowbat or put people on or, you know, some... You know, phenomena in the universe that you think needs to be explored more. <clears throat> Would love to see it and hear about it in in the comments. If that's not asking too much of all of you. <laughs> also, with those uh, those uh, uh, telescope mirrors donated to NASA for that were that were constructed for spy satellites. Uh, what would you do with those if you you had those to? Where, where would you point those? What would you use those for? I, I've I've had I've had uh, dreams about those. You know, if you could use both of them together in tandem, you get make a space interferometer of uh, those two mirrors. What kind of science you could do with that? Hubble-sized telescopes in as an interferometer. I, I think I think you could probably get a lot of people uh, lined up to use that kind of instrument. Uh, it's one baseline, man. <laughs> eh, you, 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 you radio people are spoiled. No. <laughs> you radio people are you radio people are so spoiled. And on that note of what you would use with a big giant telescope, please, folks, no jokes about the planet that orbits before Neptune. Okay, let's keep it classy here. Well, it's not about classy; it's about original. If you're gonna make a dirty joke, make it original. That's yeah. all we okay. ask. <laughs> I wrote an entire blog post on this subject. You did. <laughs> yeah. Say, say, yeah. It's like, okay, I, I, and I, I put plenty of yo mama jokes in it, so you, you know that I, I have a sense of humor about these things. I just, yeah. I, I prefer my juvenile jokes to be original, at least. Yes. So. So we have some suggestions. Uh, Jeff Force wants an ice geyser fly through for in, on near Enceladus or Europa. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then Cassini's uh, done a couple tastings of of those. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then Hugo says, more cosmology for me, please, plus a lander on Europa. Oh, and a manned mission to Mars. That's everything, isn't it? <laughs> but we're not allowed to land on Europa. Is asking for the whole universe. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, wasn't that, yeah, that was, that was the, uh, the end of the solar system as we knew it in 2010. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, well, Hugo also asking, what about Pamela and Fraser as professors? And Pamela just posted the class that she I did. was teaching in August. So, so if you want yeah, Fraser and I, Fraser. tune into Astronomy Cast every Monday at noon Pacific when one of us isn't traveling. Um, so that's Fraser and I being your classroom instructors. But from Cosmo Academy, I just posted the link both on Google Plus and uh, also on Twitter using the uh, CosmoQuest accounts. Um, there are three sections up aimed at allowing people from um, many but not all time zones to be able to easily join in. Uh, Janelle Duncan wants more telescopes in space to study baby galaxies. Here, here. Uh, this <laughs> is also one of the things that ALMA, the radio telescope in Chile, is doing is studying baby things. <laughs> how stars form, how planets form, and how galaxies form. ALMA uh, got so you. Well, and we've got the James Webb going up. Alma <laughs> got you! Yes. That means well, with any luck. Alma will, Alma will make our smiles brighter and cure cancer and, uh, you know. <laughs> They've been in Charlottesville for <laughs> the last seven years before I came here. That's kind of how I felt. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you heard about. And now it's here, and it really is that amazing. So It really is. I, I mean, we're... Alma. We're, yeah, <laughs> and JWST, um, as Hugo posts right afterwards, being successful, JWST is another thing that's going to be looking at um, baby galaxies. And hey, that's new JWST results as they come out. That could be the whole class on its own in, in a few years. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Uh, Jamie Orlando can't wait to see Pluto from New Horizons. I think yes. we have all been waiting for 2015. that. 2015. Yeah, that'll Two be pretty years. impressive. Two more years. Yeah. I can't believe it. Yeah, and Dr. Then that's Alan also Stern. The year we get to series. Oh, that's right. So I love the yeah. I love the fact that the two once 
and maybe future planets both get spacecraft visiting them in 2015. At that point, America will have sent a spacecraft to visit everything that has ever been called a planet in our solar system. Well, we have ice fishing on Europa. I want I'm ice fishing down on with Europa. That. Sure. People on Mars, as well as uh, seriously studying how terraforming might work. Um, uh, oh gosh, and we have a couple of uh, requests for uh, astronaut Hadfield as a professor. That would be awesome. I'm and, not uh, sure he can. <laughs> well, he's retiring now. So once he's he retires, retired. yeah. And uh, Alex Filipenko. Who, uh, Alex is teach? awesome. He's at the University of California, Berkeley. Okay. Um, yeah, he's he and I have have gotten to do some various things together. We've both been on episodes of the Universe together, and. He knows how to communicate, and he's also a great scientist. He did our very first ever um, weekly science hour last fall when we, uh, before we split NASA night onto Tuesday and learning space onto Wednesday. Um, so you can go back and see that on Astrosphere Vids. Cool. Well, um, and then also learning about the outer part of the solar system out in the Kuiper Belt. Um, you could also have Mike Brown um, yes. discovered a lot of awesome objects and. Um, you know, could could talk a lot about, you know, those those things, and you know, of course, you know, slightly controversial because the whole debate. But still, at the end of the day, a lot to learn about those objects. And um, you know, it brought me when I was hearing about people talking about some of these missions that they'd like to see happen. You know, that that really brought up a good point of you know people telling their representatives. You know, I mean, you know, part of the whole reason why we're doing this hangoutathon is because that there are people who don't think that science is a priority and yeah. the only way that their minds are going to be changed is if the people that have put them into office tell them that it's important to them so without getting too political here you know but but it touched on a really good point you want to see a, a sailboat lander sampling the lakes on Titan you, you got to tell people hey you know this is science this is important to me and <clears throat> I'm not going to vote you back into office you know, if you keep voting down science. So, you know, again, without getting too political here, you know, that's that's something that, you know, if, if you want to see more science and you, you want to see us doing more cool missions, um, you, you've got to get word out, not just to your friends and your family and everyone you know who are, you know, fans of science and space exploration, but, you know, get out there and, and tell the people who who represent you in our government that it's important to you. So to change things to suddenly more cheerful, uh, Bill Nugget, who's Will Bites on Twitter, has told us that um, coulrophobia is the fear of clowns. C O U L R O P H O B I A. Um, what's a science clown? Donate to find out at cosmoquest.org. Thanks so much for tweeting that, Bill. Wow. Um, that's, I'm, I'm going to favorite that one. That one yes, that's, that's, that's that sounds awesome. like a good one. And um, I may have just torn him torpedoed the heck out of my professional career because we have, you know, really esteemed people like Bill Nye, the science guy. I'm really afraid of this devolving into Ray Sanders, the science clown, but that may have already happened, so. <laughs> <laughs> we have to hit 200,000 first. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, it is really important to keep your um, representatives involved. What? Jeffrey Notkin wants Zephyrin Cochran to be his professor. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. we, we did say, oh, we did we... say people could dream. <laughs> That's awesome. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, oh and we're having ISS set. Uh, Carolyn Acorna just saw the International Space Station through a broken cloud. Came back to find Cat asleep on chair. <laughs> so uh, check heavens above uh, for your location. There are a lot of great ISS passes happening. You can, can uh, wave to the astronauts that are up there now. Yes. But uh, to... To return back to, to what Ray was saying, um, one of the things we're trying to do is create a more science literate population, uh, not just here in America but around the globe because science can do nothing um, better than improve the quality of life. It can destroy it quite radically when used Im improperly. We, we've seen lots of bad things happen, um, especially in weaponry as, as a function of using science. But when used right, science is what cures diseases. Science is what gives us hope that we'll someday get off this planet and explore beyond our atmosphere and beyond our planetary orbit. Um, 
And, and with Cosmo Academy, we're helping eight people at a time to uh, build that more scientifically literate population. And uh, yeah, we're not granting degrees, but we're granting information cert certificates. You can get a certificate, you just have to ask. Um, so, so come learn with us and part of creating a more scientifically literate society is hopefully once you understand how science works you can apply it to everything you do. You can apply that math, you can apply that technology and uh, that includes in educating your elected officials that when they're doing things that aren't science based like recently Portland removed fluoride from its water system which confused me because fluoride really if you read the literature has no negative consequences it saves teeth I'm not sure what Port Portland is thinking um, but if you can create a scientifically literate society you don't end up with strange things happen like fluoride being removed from the water um, so talk to your congress critters I've heard them referred to on, on Twitter and but don't put that in your email, though, or your yeah, letter. Congress please don't. Critter. Please do not start it with "Dear Congress Critter." <laughs> I think Congress <laughs> Critter is from Molly neutral. Ivins. <laughs> I think Molly Ivins came up with Congress Critter. Okay. So, Pamela, one thing yeah. that um, touching on your point, and since um, uh, one of our upcoming guests is Phil, I had the pleasure of having him uh, as a guest on my up, on the upcoming episode of my show. Um, I asked him uh, a viewer question of, you know, if he had one message, and this is a little bit of a preview for my show, but um, I asked him if he had one message that he would like everybody to know, and his answer was really simple and to the point, science is cool. And that's it. Yes. And we need to get that meme on the internet. We need to find a really great picture of Phil, and we need to get that all over the internet. Just a really awesome picture of Phil, and on the bottom, science is cool, Phil Plate. I'm gonna go through my pictures from Dragon Con. So that's that's sure. a, yeah. So that's that's a message I think we can all get behind. I I mean I I you can't get me to stop talking about about science literally. Yeah. You have yeah. to cut me off. We Ask. won't do that. We promise. Huh. But I used to uh, work with a group uh, who we'll have on at 3 a.m. our time uh, with the elementary school kids, and that was the main thing we wanted them to get away from this after school club is that astronomy is cool, science is cool, mm -hmm. and the secondary message was anyone can do it. And so yeah. we, we taught yes. them that they could do a science, they could do astronomy. Um, exactly. And that was, you know, of all the content we did, of all the activities we did, that was the one message we uh, felt they were getting away, coming away with, and that was... Uh, that was the best thing. Yeah. Indeed. So I'm going to check, and I'm just curious if we've had anyone sign up for the classes yet. I totally don't expect that to have happened yet, but I can look. Oops. Um, um, also, Stuart Foreman, if you're watching, I think we have you slated to come up with solar observing. Um, I think you've been sent a green room invitation, so... You can pop in for that. Uh, it's either came from Cosmo Quest or Timothy Legauer. One of those two has sent you a green room invite. Uh, so we can get some solar observing in here. Um, ooh, we've had at least one ticket sell woo for uh, section two. Um, awesome. Awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. Um, and All I right. want to remind everyone that if you, if you want to comment, the... I think we're going to stick with the two uh, safest places to comment are the YouTube page where this is broadcasting live. So we've been tweeting that link a whole lot. And then the event page for the Hangout out oh, hang out a thon that says main event. If you comment on that event page, we're seeing that as well. So those are the two places. And of course, if you tweet at Pamela and I, it'll show up in our eyeballs. Well, my, well mine's, is, yeah. mine's charging. Okay. <laughs> I ran out of power. <laughs> and of course, if you I'm want to that. make any specific comments about Cosmo Academy, feel free to direct those to me. Um, my contact information is on the Cosmo Academy page, but it's also you can also tweet at me at Dr. M. R. Francis. Dr. Mr. Francis. Dr. Mr. Francis, yes, which, yes. It's his uh, middle initial. It. I know, yes. I know, but. Uh, I won't sing Curie Ailes on like I've done before from Mr. Mr. in the 80s. But uh, um, you, can, you can tweet at me. Uh, my email is, is my name, Matthew Francis, at galileospendulum.org. Um, 
you can also find me at bowlerhatscience.org. But uh, anything you want to to give feedback about Cosmo Academy, interest in classes, stuff you'd like to see, uh, you can bypass the poll and talk to me directly. But I'd rather you go to the poll. Um, but I I would just like to hear from you and and find out what you would be interested in in having us do, work with you. So that sounds good. Oh, we have a question about New Horizons. Will New Horizons leave Voyager stra standing as far as distance from the sun in a few years? New Horizons is going quite fast. It's going quite fast. I'm not sure at what point that will happen, okay. but it will happen. It will catch I'm... up and pass, but it's a long time. And a different Voyager's direction. a long way out. Oh, the sign-up was from Dusty. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Hi, Dusty. Dusty's Welcome. taking a couple of classes with Matthew and Ray as well. And he has a fabulous avatar photo. I love that yes. Dusty. Dusty's avatar and photo. You're going to be on with us tomorrow morning. So, yay. <laughs> so, I'm actually going to stand up and go get the two of us popsicles. Ooh, it's, it's so warm up here. It's, it's, so, my, my house was built in 1893 and it predates air conditioning. And so, while it's been fairly well retrofit, our attic not so well. And I'm covered in computers at the yeah. hell. <laughs> yeah, we're both covered. Yeah. It's a bit warm so, in I'm here. getting us popsicles. That's awesome. Um, so, you're going to blow this popsicle stand? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, and again, Stuart and Phil, I know Phil Plate. I know you're watching. Uh, I think you've been, you've gotten a green room invite from Tim as well. If you could pop in there quickly, I know you know what you're doing, but pop in, make me feel better. And, sure and Steve, I just saw your message on Facebook. I hope you're listening. Um, text me what you want to chat about, and we'll see what's possible. Sweet. I don't know what Steve that is, but yeah. Steve of the coffee, awesome. Oh, awesome. Cool. Yeah, this is really good coffee. I'm sorry I spilled a little bit on your carpet. <laughs> it's just been one of those days. <laughs> the things um, we do for science. Yes. yes. Do you guys have any clothes? Yeah, there are no good pictures of Phil. He Phil says there are no good pictures of him. That's a lie. <laughs> By good, we'll we find mean one. hilarious. <laughs> so you don't need a, you don't need a good picture. You need a funny picture. You need a meme worthy picture. That's what there it comes down to. Yeah, that that's what it comes down to. We'll find one. I'm I'm and, sure <laughs> we have one. <laughs> and again, the things I do for science. I'm I'm hoping I don't guarantee Phil never being back on my show from turning him into a meme. But it's a science meme, so that makes it cool. Exactly. <laughs> again, oh. science is cool. So therefore, science is cool. since science is cool, science memes are cool. And because it's Phil saying it, then Phil's cool. So it's all good. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, ooh, I have a popsicle. Yeah, very exciting. And water. I'm just going <laughs> to. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Oh, let's see. Do you guys have any closing remarks on Cosmo Academy? I made mine. Call, call me, talk to me, tweet call at me. Call maybe? Call, no. No, not that was last summer's meme. We need a new one. So fun me, maybe. We should, we should we should post that video at some point. Well, uh -oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we did not make this set easy access. Ray, would you do you have any closing remarks about Cosmo Academy? Well, uh, Matthew's covered a lot of it, but uh, you know, uh, if you're interested, take the poll. You know, tell us what you're interested in. Tell us what you'd like to see. Um, as as Matthew said, we have no rules. We don't have a governing body other than ourselves. So if people want to see, you know, one hour short form classes, if, if people are interested in, you know, things that are during the day instead of in the evenings or on weekends, or if there's certain topics that we haven't covered yet, or even some of the ones that we proposed that you're excited about, let Suggest us know. Suggest something to us because yes. we do not have any preconceived notions of what we can and can't do. Right, and that that's something um, we t I talked about a lot as a grad student, and we had a sort of a um, a uh, oh tomorrow's professor today was the program. A bunch of us got together and talked about education and the the ways in which uh, university structure kind of um, constrains things. But yeah, we don't have that here, so let's go. Let's whole make class on dark matter. Whole class on dark matter. We can do that. Whole class on neutrinos. Whole class on Mars atmosphere. And and why terraforming Mars would be an extreme challenge, but you know, there are people out there who think that they have ways around that. But you yeah. know, to, to fully understand that type of a scenario and the challenges, yeah, focusing a, a special course just on, you know, potential habitability of Mars, both, you know, past, present and future. There, Science there's fiction a great class right there. 
science oh, yeah. fiction movie science. Yes. We could do a class on that. I saw a freshman seminar class that was done. Uh, they presented a poster at AAAS on. Uh, it was a, a an astronomy professor and a literature professor did a uh, science of sci-fi, uh, mm -hmm. focusing on terraforming Mars. So you know they were able to do that as a freshman seminar, which is pretty cool. So let us know. All right. We're down. So um, I don't think we have Stuart um, Stuart Foreman. Um, but we do have Phil somewhere. <laughs> no one's in the green room, but I think we're in the here. couch cushions. In the no one. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're saying we think we have Phil around here somewhere near the, near the couch. <laughs> on. <laughs> no, I know he's watching, so I can send him an invite, and uh, we'll get him in here. But thank you, Matthew and Ray, for joining us. Yes, thank you. Thank I you for having us. You with yeah, my thanks possible. for having us. <laughs> We'll see y'all. Bye. All right. So All right. I think I'm going to use.